morning, good evening, whatever time of day you're watching this. Um, how's it going? We are week two of the Olympics, or week three. I guess it's going to be ending soon. Kind of hard to keep track. I think it started like midweek. So it's like, yeah, it's, I guess it's about ending week two of the Olympics. And we're just going to be more of a continuation, talking about some of the CrossFit Games results, talking about observations and more Olympic coverage. I'm going to try a different format this time, kind of something that I was trying early on in the channel. I was trying to do like this weekly, like if you if you follow someone like Tim Ferriss, he has a weekly email that goes out and it's things like he's reading or watching something interesting, any other fact. It's just like a five bullet Friday, I think it's called. And I'm going to try to do more of a format of that. Yes, I'm going to continue talking about what I'm working on, some other things I find fascinating, but more like current event type stuff too, and just anything else I find in the news. So if you're listening, I'll do my best to describe what I'm doing. But if obviously, if you have the opportunity to watch, then you're going to see some of the visual aspects that I'm doing moving forward. A um, couple things to talk about, like what I'm wearing and you're seeing. Yes, I'm rocking a Noble shirt because the uh, Noble CrossFit Games has ended. And I, I honestly love their stuff. Like, their shoes kind of faded on me. And I'm wondering how long the Noble shoe uh, kind of product that they have is going to last. They've come out with the runners. They have the lifters, different materials on the runners. However, their big marketing thing is it's the no bullshit. It's this is what we're making in terms of a shoe. It's got the ripstop stuff. It's super simple. We come out with different patterns, different colors. I'm just wondering how well that's going to survive. For example, I have two pair of nobles, high tops. I love them. I really like high tops. However, Metcon 7s came out, and it's just been my all-around favorite shoe, and I'm wearing the crap out of them. I'm, I'm going to completely destroy these things, so I need another pair of shoes to work out and rotate in. I am going to try. There's some other brands. I, I want to try some Under Armour shoes. Some people have reached out and asked me my opinion on those as far as a cross-training shoe, and then Go Ruck makes a pretty simple shoe, so I'm interested to get my hands on those. However, money comes out of pocket. I pay for it if it's a shoe I don't like sits on the shelf so there's sunk cost in it but if it's something that people are interested in i'm definitely willing to do it so it's on the list but in terms of noble like the clothes i had mentioned in my review of ten thousand shorts that i believe the most premium shorts that i own are noble shorts however they don't come with a warranty and i think the price on the return that you get for the product isn't quite there all money aside, I would recommend like the Noble Clothes. This shirt is super soft. And I saw the swag bags that the guys got or everyone got at the CrossFit Games, and I'm super jealous. Like I would want to qualify in the 30 to 35 range next year just in the hopes that I go there and get all that stuff. So I am rocking the shirt. Video coming up, actually my next video I'm continuing to do research on it and testing out the clothes, and I'm wearing the joggers this company thousand miles sent me oh my god these are so comfortable and they actually sent me their shorts and the interesting interesting thing about their shorts is they don't really look like a pair of training shorts but they're 100 percent able to be worn as such so i've been wearing those the barbell movements they actually hug my leg a little more than i normally like but i noticed because of my short length meaning like five to seven inch inseam because they hug, they don't really move up and down my leg, which is interesting, and it doesn't bother me. So that's something I got to talk about in that video. But moving forward, I'm, I might be a big fan of these Thousand Miles Global of the pants. I also got a pair of their khaki pants that feel like athletic wear. So that's coming down. That's what I'm wearing. And then the hat. Shout out to my he was my pledge father when I was in a fraternity in college. Working very, very hard and tirelessly on a company called Wellist, and that's their logo. I actually really th I think their logo is pretty sick. And it's an artificial intelligence macro tracking program and uh, helps you shop for groceries and feed. So tirelessly working on that. I would love to talk more about it and have him here on the podcast 
and interview him more as it matures and develops into a go-to-market program free for use because it's something that a lot of people struggle with in their macro tracking and I'm super excited for him and to work on that. Um, briefly touch, if you want to support the podcast in the description or the show notes, hit the links, my affiliate links, CBDMD, Whoop, 8 Sleep, First Form Supplements, and you're, you know, do whatever you want in terms of buying the products. I only affiliate myself with products that I think everyone should have in their lives. So if you want to support the podcast, go check those links out. Uh, another case to talk about is my deadlift for charity, which is Saturday. If you haven't made a pledge, go check out my whoop giveaway video that's on my channel. And you can be entered for either a six month new membership or a six month extension if you're already a member. And it all goes to the Flatwater Foundation here in Austin, Texas. And just really excited to see what I can pull. I was actually at the gym today. I want to take off. It is currently Wednesday. This is going to be Saturday. So I'm trying to stay away from any like heavy lifting until then. Been actually really upping my workout game as of late through supplementation, proper recovery. I think the ice bath is honestly helping with just feeling good as much, as much, as much as it sucks. And I only have it at 50 degrees. I don't know if I'm going to go anymore. If I'm feeling the effects of 50, why? Because even at 50 degrees, and I heard Joe Rogan talk about this on his podcast because his was at 30, is at 33. I have trouble warming up. Today was the actual first time I went from the ice bath upstairs into a hot shower just to get my core body temperature back down to something that was comfortable. Before, I was sitting in a hoodie, in pants, and just trying to warm up. So it sounds like torture. And, you know, why do we do these things? Because we're. I don't know, are we idiots? Are we trying to perform past our prime and pushing ourselves a little too hard? I don't know, but that's for me to do and to share with the viewership. But I've been feeling really good. Today I pulled and I was just doing like static holds just to feel the weight on my body because my PR and my deadlift is 565 pounds, which I guess is an okay amount. My I'm currently sitting at 202 pounds, six foot tall. So uh, those are my dimensions. And I, I guess that's some, I would like to pull 600 at some point. I don't think, I mean, it would be a miracle if it happened on Saturday. But I think 570 may be realistic. I, I pulled 515 for three. That felt pretty good. Probably could have pulled it for five. So I, I'm pushing it. Um did some static holds today, 635 pounds. I used every 45 plate my gym had, the metal weights anyway. And it it felt like a lot. Felt like a lot, which is interesting because later on in like the current event section of this podcast, I'm going to be going over Lasha setting new snatch and clean and jerk world records. And he's clean and jerking more than my max deadlift, which is insane. He's a much bigger guy, but good Lord, the power that you can just imagine from that. We'll talk about that later. Whoop video. Posted a new whoop video vlog. Jesus Christ. Vlogs take so long. Shout out to the vloggers of YouTube. Wow. Um, And I was constantly, like, I, I prefer, like, this is a free form way to talk. I can just sit here let my thoughts flow and discuss what I want to discuss, hit the record button, no edits, all that hard stuff. My review videos, the big core of it is me spending so much time researching and then I get to sit down, parse through my notes, turn it into some sort of script and give you a more formal delivery because there's just so much to talk about in some of my reviews that I do use a teleprompter. Uh, I use an app on my phone and I put it up on, I'm actually over this camera is my setup. So that's what I'm looking at is this cheap little teleprompter deal. Phone just reflects off of this glass and then I can read it. So that's why if you're wondering, it seems pretty formal. Another reason I want to get this podcast out was just kind of just to display my personality. But in terms of podcast or podcasting in terms of 
vlogging, it's just like, you know, I got a lot to talk about. There were some things that I missed that I can touch on here. And you're just talking, 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 hoping that you capture everything. I had a specific goal to talk about how I use my whoop every day. And it got pretty good. It seems to be getting a good reception, but wow. I don't know how much my motivation would be dying if that was what I was doing all the time. And someone like Casey Neistat, who was doing that every single day for however long, geez, kudos, man. That's that's some hard work. But I'll do more vlogs. I've had some other requests of like what I do on my rest active recovery days. Maybe like a, what I eat. Some people find those interesting. I've, I actually do find those interesting for the high level elite athletes, but maybe it's more. Maybe it could be interesting for someone like more average, like myself, who's not a games athlete or professional athlete of any kind. Just your regular online adult male entertainer. I guess that's what I tell people I do. But it was it was tough. A um, couple things I missed. Like I wanted to go down the list of kind of the misinformation, misunderstandings, misnomers of whoop. But that'll give me an opportunity to maybe do it on a podcast or maybe one of my review videos. Probably do a, like a podcast episode fully on things like people talking about heart rate accuracy. Um, I didn't touch on why I wear my whoop on my bicep. I just said that I do. Um, had thoughts of, I guess which I just talk about right now. I had thoughts of doing a video of whoop on the bicep versus wrist. But what makes it really difficult to do one of those is everyone's different. I've talked about this in the Apple Watch video I did about the most accurate caloric expenditure tracker. I've talked about it in other Whoop videos. It's the limitation of the technology and not the actual product of the heart rate accuracy. And in terms of heart rate accuracy, I did the video matching up against the Polar H10 ECG heart strap, which is the gold standard. There, there's nothing better. There are things close, like pr- fractional percentages, like Wahoo Fitness Tracker, Garmin's ECG monitor. But the more you get away from what the gold standard is, the more your comparison can be off. So that's why I went with the Polar H10. And if someone doesn't have a heart rate strap, I always recommend the Polar H10. Just get the best if you need data. So... In terms of doing like a, a comparison between my bicep and my wrist, it's just everyone's different. There's so many limiting factors of how it measures, you know, age, sex, muscle density, fat percentage. Uh, and it would be difficult for me to do my reading and say, hey, 100% of the time, it'll be better on your bicep than your wrist. I personally have seen my results that it is better on my bicep, which thankfully is the case because I do prefer just to wear it on my bicep. So I don't know, like it's it's a tough call. It's a tough thing to do. I don't know how to send that message, do a video on it and it be something useful. I always want to be very cautious that the information I'm presenting is accurate or can be relied upon. Very, very tough. Someone always comes out of left field. Like, I'll say for example, like um, I had a exchange with someone about athletic greens. And they said, well, spirulina has been known to block B12 from getting into the body. And I was like, what are you talking about? So I said, hey, you know what? I, I'll entertain this conversation. Can you please send me a source? Sent me a, another YouTube video of this older gentleman, physician. I, I'm, I guess he was a physician. I don't know. I'm not going to share the video because I, I, I think it's false. And he just said there's a mechanism in there where spirulina, components of spirulina have been shown to imitate B12 and then get into the receptors and block actual B12 from getting into it. You know, interesting. Had never heard that. Went in depth into a review of some articles, like way more than I ever should have. Like I was just like, okay, let me find one case or one clinical journal validating what this gentleman said. And I just couldn't find one. 
I don't want that to ever be the case of me spouting off something that doesn't have resources. Just for example, you know, if you want to look at my supplementation protocol, it's specific to me. I'm clear about that. Everything has sources of why I take it and how I went about deciding that's what I was going to take. So it's the Wild West out there on YouTube and seeing people's reviews. Getting into this when I I don't want to watch anyone's reviews before I review a product myself. I want it to be all fresh. I want my perspective not to be influenced by anyone else. And then afterwards, if one pops up or one maybe interests me, I will check it out. I don't know if you can hear my dog barking, but she's outside. Uh, so sorry if you hear her. What was I talking about? Okay, I was talking about, yeah. So I'll do the review. And then, you know, there's some bigger YouTube channels out there for sure. And they'll talk about it. And I'll, I'll be scratching my head like, where'd you get this information? Like this... There's, there's nothing out there. Like maybe I'll do my own search. I, I'm a skeptic by nature. It's something that I learned when I was in law school as well of hearing, like hearing and listening, different things. Like you got to listen, listen to understand, not to respond. So I always want to listen to what the person is saying, understand where their perspective's coming from. But then I'm going to go in depth and figure out where the hell did this come from. And I, I see, and th these guys are like big YouTubers. And I'm, I'm not going to talk about who these guys are, but wow, it just, it scares me. It scares me people are relying on this information. And I'm just going to do my best to always be transparent and help you understand where I'm coming from. So everything's going to, everything's coming back to, uh, yeah, I want to give you my subjective perspective because the initial views of this channel was I'm only going to give objective perspectives, but that's not why people watch any one person. Like they, they want to know based on their own take, how a product is like these clothes, these clothes are going to have some object, uh, thousand miles review will be the next one. They're going to have some objective points to talk about. I want to talk about the company. I want to talk about the materials. I want to talk about the price points. But then also I'm going to give you my subjective viewpoint. Like I said earlier, like these these joggers are just so comfy. So comfy. And I'm always going to hear that. I'm always going to adhere to that methodology in terms of this. And it takes me so, so much longer to put out reviews. But I think the quality of them over time because once they're out there, they're out there. Once people see them, that's information in their head, and I can't take it back. So I want everything. I don't want to always be the first person to have a video out there because it is a rat race. People want to know as soon as possible what something is. Maybe I got to pull all nighters sometimes to do the research and do that, but I, I, I don't. I don't want crappy information out there. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, okay. I think that's all I got to talk about in terms of what's going on with myself. Oh, another review coming up. Another massage gun. I get so many damn massage guns. Like, I need to start giving these things. I, I give them away to friends and family. Uh, but I, I need to figure out. I'm gonna, I should give them, to so some of them to the viewers as well. They're all great. Like, I, a lot of these companies, I'll say like 50% of the time, I'll actually entertain reviewing a massage gun. Because... Unless it's like something with with patented ergonomics, like the Theragun, which is my number one. Everything's gonna be compared against the Theragun. It, there's really it's it's hard for me to look at something and be like, hey, okay, this is the angle I'm gonna give you when I do a review. So I'll reject a lot of them. Some of them just they're clear they're clearly drop shipped from something like Alibaba. Like I, I I don't want them. But other times I get good stuff. So anytime I'm gonna give away a massage gun, it'll be because it's a good product. It's just no reason for me personally to keep it. Like I would recommend it, but I don't need all of these massage guns laying around. Like I've got four right now and I use one of them all the time, the Theragun. So that's going to be after the thousand miles global ice bath, thermogenics coming up. The amount of misinformation on thermogenics that I'm seeing as I keep continuing my deep dive into it of the use of ice baths is just it's pretty nuts so yeah all right let's get into this new format um first of all CrossFit Games 
I loved the programming this year. A lot of the stuff seems achievable. Now there's things I can't do, like I suck at handstand walks, so I couldn't do the handstand obstacle. Uh, the the thirty to thirty five division, I I could do. I think I I could do all of it, uh, and be somewhat competitive. It just amazes me the engine these guys have that actually competed. The weights on the cleans got a little higher than I believe I could do at this point. Like, I'm fully capable. I'm physically capable of pulling the weight. I don't, it's a tough thing to say, pound for pound, I don't think any of the competitors are stronger than I am. I've seen, like, the deadlifts. There was a workout last year. It was deadlift, squat, shoulder press. I think I would have placed near the top. There was only five competitors last year, but I'm pretty sure, like, I'm over 1,200 pounds when I add up those totals. So, like, 45 squat, 565 deadlift, and then, like, 225 shoulder press. So, I mean, my numbers are up there. I think it's over 1,300, actually. Um, But the form, I'm working through a program of Squat University and Olympic Chad, or Ali Chad, I think he is, on Instagram. But it's everything. Like I've done, I did on my Whoop video, I did the 21.15.9 Echo Bike and Snatch. I did 95 pounds because I didn't have the plates to do 105. Um, I guess I could have went to 115 and not been a bitch about it, but what are you going to do? I had done a heavy squat protocol before that. Um, but it's fun. I did the it did the clean workout. I did seven rounds, two twenty five. Ended up at two ninety five. So I just added five rounds, two hundred fifty meter run at my gym. Oh, I I also did the wall walk and one hundred eighty five pound thruster. That's a lot of weight. I went down. I did a workout beforehand, and I I think one fifty five would be good. I think that would be a good weight, and I think that was actually the woman's and maybe the woman's weight was one thirty five. I can't remember. But I'm working through those. Everything but the one-mile swim and three-mile kayak because my swimming is rough. Something to work on because I, I kind of want to get into some triathlons too. Like I got so much crap that I want to do. Um, so that's why I got to do ice baths and I got to take these supplements and I got to do all this and that and stay healthy. So Jess Medeiros, new champion. You know, I initially thought that, well, first of all, Tia Claire Toomey, Dominated the field as she does. And it made a interesting juxtaposition because before, you know, Matt Frazier could have came in and won again. I'm fully confident of that. It wasn't exciting. Like, Justin Medeiros did win his last, the last event. But it just wasn't exciting because you didn't see these wins and wins and seeing the leader pumped up and, you know, taking full charge it was just because it's you know it's the point system you just got a place and you just got to work your way up and Madero's kind of just gingerly ate away at the lead until he became the leader and then held on to it for the rest of the CrossFit games but it, it just wasn't ex- as exciting to me and then you look at like what they're pulling and what they're doing and thinking oh Frazier would have dominated that but uh, and it was, but that wasn't the case when Froning got out of it because of Frazier's capability just became a better athlete. Like I think Froning and Frazier both in their primes, because I, I don't believe Frazier was in his primes when Froning was in, would have been an awesome back and forth. And it just would have been them two leaving the field completely behind. And then also watching the CrossFit Games into, again, comparison with the Olympic Games, And just gets me thinking, like, why, you know, CrossFit CrossFit is, the CrossFit games are building and building and building. The purse this year was huge. And I just saw for the Iron Games Invitational, which is a CrossFit sanction, but not the CrossFit games. It's here going to be actually here in Austin, Texas. I'm going to try to get tickets to. The money is getting bigger. So the the interest is obviously growing larger. But I I still think it's going to suffer from the fact that we are watching these athletes not fully masters of their art they're uh jack of all trades masters of none unlike the olympics where everyone's so body specific and i touched on this last year when you see all these different ones even the 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 interesting thing because track and field had started was the difference like you see these like linebacker 
running back type bodies for the hundred meter, with the exception of Usain Bolt. Um, but then when you just as soon as you jump up to the two hundred meter, you get a lot slimmer. Four hundred meter for sure, a lot slimmer. Eight hundred meter, you just get thinner and thinner and thinner. So that was interesting to see in the body types. Another thing I noticed was, like our guys were wearing their Apple watches. The Whoop bands are on these athletes. Those are the only two that I actually saw. And then Nikes across the board. Like I'm talking ninety percent of track and field and running. It's just Nike, Nike, Nike. Easy to spot. Easy to no. Like I, like I predicted that. Easy prediction. Not that I'm any smarter than anyone that's very focused in that field of things. It just comes with the nature. When I fully understand the technology, why wouldn't you be using the best up against the best? So that's that's the one thing I noticed, and I think that's going to be a limitation of the CrossFit Games. It's super impressive. If you're someone, this, I mean, this is the same with jujitsu. I think I may have mentioned this in the last podcast too. When you're in in it, and you are actually someone that participates in whatever activity it is, whether it is jujitsu or CrossFit, you have a more appreciation, humility, understanding of it. And watching the games is, is just a different perspective. You see these guys doing things that you just can't do like for example i did the 21 15 9 echo bike and snatch workout i would have been last i would have been dead last by like 15 seconds and they that was like the third or fourth event of that day so i'm pumping my heart at 180 beats per minute and these guys are just mowing along so and it, one thing that was good in the crossword games was seeing these I'll say quote unquote taller athletes. I mean, I'm six foot tall, but you guys got like Brent Fakowski and Pat Vellner. I think Vellner's 5'11 and Fakowski maybe 6'1, six, six foot, 6'1. Six, so it was good to see some taller guys up there because these barbell movements, when you're just rapidly moving them up and down, are tough. But that was an interesting one because that echo bike and the snatch one, because taller guys are better on the echo bike, but can't cycle the barbell as fast as a shorter guy. So I think that might have been the most balanced combination of workouts that I've ever seen. And then touched to T. Claire Toomey, just absolutely dominating and leaving the field behind. But I loved my favorite moment, and let's we can jump to this. Sorry if you're listening, but hopefully you saw it. Was this moment here? Hold on, let me. Sorry. Right here. That face, wow. Like surprising herself with her lift. That was a beautiful moment, Annie Thor's daughter. I mean, she just had a baby a year ago, couldn't participate in the games last year. I'm going to rewind that back. I mean, this is this is what it's all about right here. Competition, just that was, that was a beautiful moment. Absolutely beautiful moment. And in relation to that, another one I'm going to share. It gives me chills to say that just just because I, I'm the appreciation for people's hard work and doing their best out there is just I, I love it. I, I can't say enough things about just stuff like that. So then you can jump over to I got to keep checking because I'm producing this myself. Maddie Rogers, uh, great follow Instagram, young woman. I think she's 25. I want to say. Um, yeah, look at her. Look at that game face. Pumped. Again, sorry if you're listening. But she's... This is all out. This is her. Temp number three, 138 kilogram clean and jerk. Getting ready. I mean, the pull's going to be good. If you're going to jerk this, you know that you can put it up. Right here. To me, this is the most nerve-wracking part of any Olympic lift. Boom. Oh, yes. Look at that. She's going to bust out. Look. That's a beautiful moment, too. Wow. Crying. I'm going to choke up just watching it. That was incredible. You want to talk about, like, you want to force, the media wants to force feed things into our face of diversity and inclusion and feminist and all this stuff that like that's a natural moment those two moments are two powerful women doing their thing just and just destroying that's absolutely what i 
love to see. And it's not manufactured. It's just how things unfolded and just the natural course and progression of of the sport. It's just beautiful. I just absolutely loved those were my two favorite moments so far. Moments so far, sorry. Uh, another one was the uh, the U.S. woman wrestler. Just talk about how much she loves America and stuff. I I should have pulled that clip too. And that was another beautiful moment. Um, U.S. woman winning gold. It's it's just it's amazing. It's a hundred percent amazing. I love it. I love every second of it. And that's you. That's it right there. Let's not manufacture this stuff. Let's just show these the actual powerful women doing powerful things and celebrate that in the moment. So good. Get off my soapbox. All right. There's a, there's a lot of Olympic lifting. There's like a, a few other things I want to go to. You know, one thing that is so odd to me is the United States is good at a lot of things, like racking up the gold medals and stuff, but uh, the Olympic lifting, what what – I would love to, for someone to explain to me what exactly is going on in that realm where I saw in one of the weight classes our guy Wes Kitts. What was his name? Good, I mean, beautiful first name, by the way. Beautiful first name. Um, let me see if I pull that up. Okay. Let me close that. Switch back over. Okay, Knoxville native Wes Kitts sets American weightlifting record at Tokyo Olympics. Um, Kitts became the first American to complete a 177 kilogram or 390 pound snatch. That's beastly. I mean, but like American record total weight 859 pounds with the snatch and clean and jerk. Good enough to finish eighth. American record. What? Like eighth place? Come on, guys. Where's uh? I mean, I'm not saying me. I mean, you know, by all means, all you guys who are the best in the world at what you do. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, it's amazing. I mean, he's pumped. He's pumped. American record. Kitts now holds three American and Pan Am weightlifting records. He already held the clean and jerk and total weights record. Um, he's now competed in the three world championships, with his highest finish being tenth in 2017. He also won the gold medal at 2018 and 2019 Pan American Championships. Um, okay. Like he played soccer. Good for you. Okay. Uh, but I mean, that's so interesting to me that that's one area we're not dominating in. Would, would love, would love to know what's going on with that. Uh, I also saw, what is it? What was the article? Okay. Pull this up too. Boom, boom, boom. That's what happens when you got to produce your own stuff. I need a I need to change setup or something that I, one single button I can hit that's not actually on my. I'll figure it out. Let's move that. Shop your Nike. Nike killed it with a lot of the gear this year. I'm not just because of the manufacturing practices Nike, but man, I want some of their stuff. Anyway, um, let's see. This is on TeamUSA.org. Kate Nye wins silver for best U.S. Olympic weightlifting result since 2000. 2000. That's crazy. Um, I guess we had a gold medalist, too. Tara Knott and bronze medalist um, Cheryl Hathworth, 2000. And Sarah Robles in 2016. Sarah Robles off. Beast. Apologies, ladies. I mean, I don't know if beast is a compliment or not. I mean, it in the best way possible. Just, I was gonna say, monster. I I don't know how to describe it. Like what she's doing is is crazy. Like the the amount of weight she's lifting is bronze medalist, awesome. Sarah Robles, like the top weight class for women, killed it. I I just want to know. I want to know. Anybody knows what's going on with the United States and our weightlifting and why it's a known thing, yet we aren't progressing. Are we not juicing enough? Are we not hiding the juice? What's going on? Like, I've heard on multiple instances. I mean, you can look at the documentary Icarus about other countries, Russia, the Russian Olympic Committee. What the hell is that about? You know, you, Russia can't compete, but the Russian Olympic Committee Committee can be, uh Russian Olympic Committee can compete. That there you go. There's your tongue twister. Is 
is crazy. So it's just exposure and then hearing Olympians on podcasts and it's apparently a rampant thing, but we're playing by the rules. Are we? Is everyone? Everyone playing by the rules? Would like to know that as well. How are you ever going to know that? Yep. Yeah. And then we're going to go to the last bit. Lasha. I had mentioned Lasha on a couple pa- uh, past podcasts. Like, what is this man going to do? It's not, it's, everyone know. If you're in that 109 kilogram and up weight class, you're, you're vying for second place, a distant second place. He, it's it. He's, um, putting up numbers and set two new world records. Let's pull that up. Let's look at that amazingness. I got this up here. Let's check this out. How are we looking, Lasha? Looking good. Looking beefy, boy. Looking beefy. He's like 6'8", 380. Georgia, not the country. Or not the state, the country. Attempt number one. I'm going to go to, I just want to see his world record. He, and what's funny, oh, there's, a, okay. What's funny is that his, his attempts, like if attempt number one was higher than everyone else's attempt number three. What are you going to do about that? That's a replay of attempt number two. Good Lord, have mercy. All right, attempt number three, 223 kilograms for a world record. Rips it off the ground like it's a paperweight. How much more weight could he do? Like, can we see attempt number four? The the form, the power, everything was perfect. That man's snatch is perfect. His Olympic snatch. Good job. Wow. All right. He is. Let's go in the clean and jerk. You know what? You're super impressive. I just want to see attempt number three. Your second world record. All right. That's the end of attempt number two. Off. Easy weight. Lightweight. I believe his last attempt is 260. Well, we're about to see. He's coming out. Put put the number up. I know it translated to like 580, which is higher than the deadlift that I'm going for this year. So, uh 265 grams, kilograms, world record attempt. Let's watch this. That's right. Get pumped. Tiny guy. Lightweight. Nike lymph lifters. Works with Nike to develop what they do. But I, I haven't seen his lifters, though, for sale. Whatever that style is. Boom. Into the receive. Up. Mm. Oh, he feels it. Every pound. Got the lights. World record. Two world records. Unbelievable. Like, I don't know how, like, it's got to be impressive. Just purely the weight has to be impressive to everybody. But if you actually, like, my snatch is awful, 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 awful. In relation to how much I can lift and other things, it's garbage. So to see that man snatch that much and then do that clean and jerk is just incredible. The vast array of amazing athletes, amazing moments has been so great between the CrossFit Games and the Olympic Games. It's motivated me. Maybe that maybe that has been in conjunction with how much I've been working out lately. I'm just I'm just motivated, you know. See this carries on. They'll have ended before my next podcast, which is going to be sad. Um, maybe we'll do like a little recap. Talk about like metal counts and stuff, what the U.S. suffered in, what tech I could see. It, it just, it's it's basic tech. I mean, everybody's wearing Nikes in the uh, running realm. There are some Puma, New Balance. New Balance got some sick shoes in there that I don't see online. I, I hate when they do that. When I see like uh, college football players or NFL players wearing some Nikes or something, like when I was playing a flag football league, and I was like, I want some, I want some sick cleats. You can't find those anywhere. Why well, you do that? You know, you're making enough money. You can't put them out to market. Anyway, that wraps this episode up. Let me know your thoughts. If you listen to this in the comments of like this um, kind of current events thing, I'm, I'm going to have some bullet points. I want this to be more formalized than me just 
getting up here rambling. I'm still going to do that. This is almost like my public journal of <laughs> everything that I'm going through. But I want I want there to be some tidbits of actual information that you can take with you that uh, I'm learning as well. Because I think that stuff is super interesting and I find it super interesting. So I share what I find interesting. And I hope you share this too. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys in the next one.